and East Harlem community is just shocked by the death of a beloved salon owner. CBS 2's Naveen Dhaliwal has details. Vianel Beauty Salon should have been bustling with customers on Monday, but instead the doors were shuttered on East 112th Street as many left flowers for Vianel Garcia. She always meant well. She helped everybody here. Daphne Lugo was emotional as she told us that she just got her hair done on Friday, not knowing it would be the last time with Garcia. She's amazing. It's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. For a lot of women, when they become a mother, it is one of the happiest moments of their life. Though children bring a lot of joy, motherhood does not come without many emotional changes. However, through all the challenges of raising a child, most parents hope to raise a respectful and good human being that can be productive in society as an adult. Well, 44-year-old Vianelle Garcia had the same hopes and dreams for her four children. But of her four, her one and only son was the one who ended up giving her trouble. So much so that 22-year-old Miguel Duval decided to commit a terrifying crime, taking the life of the woman who loved him the most, leaving many people in complete and total terror at what took place. In the heart of East Harlem on 112th Street sits Vianelle's beauty salon. Vianelle, a longtime hairdresser and owner of the shop, have been doing hair for well over two decades. Her shop is not just a place to get beautified, but it is also known as a place of relaxation as soon as you come in the doors. Vi, as many affectionately called her, was said to always set the atmosphere with nice music and complimentary coffee. Many customers called her the best person and an amazing woman. Vi often used her business to help others and was a staple businesswoman in her community. Her shop was said to be like a home for many because of the way she treated her clients with many becoming lifelong friends. Beyond her business, she also did any and everything she could for her kids to give them a good life. According to one of her daughters, she was the type of mother always rooting for her kids to succeed and Vi also led by example. Throughout her life, Vi exemplified the purest qualities of humanity. She gave selflessly, love unconditionally, and brought joy to everyone she encountered, her daughter would express. Her smile could light up the darkest room, and her gentle spirit brought comfort to those in need. Whether she was volunteering her time, offering a listening ear, or simply just being a friend. Even with all the positivity she put out, it was not enough for one person in her life, and that person was her 22-year-old son, Miguel Duvall. The only boy of Vi's four children, and I'm sure he was his mother's pride and joy. However, here in recent times in 2024, something was going on with Miguel as he was living in a homeless shelter. The young man used to live with his mother in Harlem, but no longer did, and it was not made clear of why. However, I was able to find out that he was currently grappling with some mental health issues, allegedly, and had a history of menacing some of his family members. Now, it does not appear that this aggression with Miguel was always there, but developed as he aged. This was him receiving a surprise birthday party on his 15th birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Miguel! All his family showed love and celebrated him. However, something down the line changed. While he was said to be in the homeless shelter, Miguel was also receiving treatment from a psychiatrist at a hospital near the shelter in the Washington Heights area. On Sunday, July 14, 2024, Vi was heading to the shelter to visit her son, and apparently Miguel had been in some type of altercation beforehand. When Vi arrived, her son was bleeding from his hands. She tried to convince him to go to the ER for treatment, but he allegedly stated he wanted something to eat and wanted to stop by the Fort Washington Park in Manhattan beforehand. According to one of Vi's friends, she did not go to the shelter by herself because she did not feel safe around her son alone. So the mom, son, and whomever tagged along headed to the park. Now from there, it was said that the other person who tagged along went and got food while Vi and Miguel stayed at the park waiting. This is when all hell would break loose. It was around 4 p.m. that Sunday in July, and witnesses saw them at the edge of the park when suddenly Vi began to scream. 
they basically both fell down a ravine area onto an embankment near the Henry Hudson Parkway. People could still hear Vi screaming, then the screaming suddenly became muffled. Miguel had allegedly just pushed his mother over on purpose, and once they made it down the embankment, he began hitting her with a rock, harming her so badly that she tragically suffered a fatal head injury. Miguel then reappeared upon the street covered in his mother's bodily fluids and scratches. Apparently, the pair were having some words before he decided to unalive his mother, and he admitted to the police that he took her life because of past family issues, according to authorities. Meanwhile, a woman is dead after police say her son pushed her down an embankment inside at Fort Washington Park in Washington Heights. 22-year-old Miguel Duvall now faces second-degree charges. Witnesses told police they saw Duvall push 44-year-old Vianel Garcia. Garcia was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced. It's not clear what led up to this. During the time of the incident, Miguel's father, Miguel Sr., was in the DR and he told local news in New York, he took my wife. He took away my entire life. He ruined my family. Miguel is currently behind bars and charged with second degree unaliving. Now, do you think he planned what took place before acting on it? Let me know. Because he definitely has some rage in him to do his mother the way he did. It is truly heartbreaking. Another mother, wife, sister, and so much more gone for no reason. And now, like his father said, Miguel has ruined the family. Not just the family, but the community. I mean, her place of business was frequent by many for so many years. One client turned friend wrote, I have so many memories with her beautiful soul. She spoiled me just as well as I spoiled her. I lived in her salon like it was my home. That's how welcome she made you feel. You was the most sweetest Spanish person I met. We met at a salon she used to work at and I fell in love with her hands and my hair and never let no one else do my hair since that day. She was so good at what she did and winded up opening her own shop and I followed right there with her. I was a true loyal customer. As time went by, I became a part of her family. She used to feed me all the time, make me coffee, introduce me to a Dominican drink, Carbrugel. Every time she came back from DR, she had a bottle for me. Or she had her husband, Miguel, bring me one back because she knows I love it so much. I am the one who started her to do weaves. She practiced on my head and became successful. She didn't even know how to braid black people's hair until she met me. I kept bothering her until she gave in. She was so talented in many ways, and that's one thing I loved about her. She came to gatherings as I came to hers. I would come show her love for her birthday with flowers because she loved them so much. I remember I got her a Juicy Couture bracelet for her birthday. She was so surprised and happy. She hugged me so tight. I'm going to miss those hugs. We laughed together. We cried together. She was more than a hairdresser. She was a good friend to me. That was a very touching tribute to a soul that's gone too soon. Her life mattered, and she should still be here. My thoughts and prayers are with all who loved her in this horribly sad time. So please don't forget to comment your thoughts and prayers for this family as well. And hit that like button and share to make your people aware. And as always, remember to stay woke. Things change quickly.